Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Priyan Chagarwal and in this video, let me tell you about my course called TLE Eliminators that I've been running from April 2021. So it's been three years since I've been running that course. We have taught more than 5,500 programmers through that course already. Now this entire course, you know, is divided into four levels. So for somebody who is at a particular level in their competitive programming journey, they can choose to join a level and learn only those relevant topics. So first of all, you get live classes on all of these topics, right? Every single week, we have around one to two live theory classes and we teach you all of these topics in a very structured manner. Secondly, we provide you with curated practice problems on all of these topics that we've taught you. For example, if I teach you dynamic programming for maybe three weeks, then in these three weeks, I am going to give you two to three problems every single day. Now, in case you're stuck on any practice problem from the course, you get dedicated video solution where we talk about the exact intuition involved. How do you think? Apart from this, if you're stuck on any practice problem from or outside the course, we provide you with instant doubt support. Now, what happens in doubt support is that we have a team of around 30 to 40 experienced competitive programming mentors. These mentors are already experts and candidate masters on code forces, and they help you solve these problems in which you're stuck. Like you could come up with a debugging problem. You could come up with a problem in which you require some hints and overall, you know, you get to learn a lot from the experience of these mentors. And apart from that, there are other pretty cool features. Uh, you know, you can go and check out our website to explore them. Uh, one thing that I want to mention is that TLE Eliminators is a live course, right? So every three months we launch one single batch and in one single batch, we run all of these level one, two, three, four parallel. So, you know, you can go onto our website and check out when is the next course coming up. And if you're interested, you can sign up for that. Hello everyone. So this is going to be the post contest discussion for weekly uh, for lead code contest 390. All right, uh, we'll be discussing all four problems. Let us read the problem one. It's pretty simple, maximum length substring with two occurrences. You will be given a string S and you will return the maximum length of a substring that it contains at most two occurrences of each character. All right, so question is simple to understand. Let's say the string looks like this, B, C, B, 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 C, B, A. Then you will find the longest substring in this or rather the size of the longest substring in this in which you think any character is coming at most two times. So it can come one time or two times, not more than two. So they can easily see that you, if you take a string B, C, B, A in this, C comes one, A comes first one time and B comes two times. And that is the whole limit. So they have finally said that four is a good and the best maximum length you can take for the substring and you need to return that thing. All right, so problem seems pretty easy, right? Uh, during the contest also, if you will have a quick look at the constraints given to you, constraints are very small, right? That means in this constraints, you can definitely create even an N square, even an N cube solution. And I think it would be bet better if you would have created an ON solution, right? So first solution that will hit you, hit to your mind would be very simple, very brute solution sort of a manner, because that is mostly what problems one contain you will say, all right, I can actually find all substrings, all right, find all substrings. And when I find actually every substring, I can actually then with a frequency map, frequency map, I can actually first find out every frequency of every character that would have come in that substring. And when I do that, I can then run an iteration on this frequency map and then check, is this frequency maps checking that is going to happen? Do I find every character's frequency less than equal to two? If I do, then I say this is a viable string and I can max its length out with some answer variable. So I can say, all right, answer variable becomes maximum of whatever that current substring I had extracted length was. Now, brute manner, I understand that finding all substrings in a very single uh, string manner, the basic solution you must know will create an n square complexity for you. Is that right? One uh, loop would be there to iterate on the I character and then one loop I uh, iterator, sorry, and inside you will have an another inner loop to prefer the J character, J iterator. And both of them combined is going to give you the extraction of every substring or rather iteration among the length of every substring. So this is an N square solution definitely, right? And if let's say frequency map you have taken up as a vector of 26 size, correct to actually 26 size or actually int int type you can say of the uh, total let's say i can call this frequency of 26 size initially everything is zero i initialize this back in the loop every time and i do this approach this is an n squared solution and this is definitely going to work all right why because n is an order of 
100. So that means in contest, if you have made the solution, you are good to go. And if, if I actually uh, show you the approach over here for the uh, main part of this brute solution, you will find that this is a viable thing to do also, right? As per my code also I have done, right? I have taken a res variable, correct? This is the main answer I'm trying to maximize, starts with zero. Then I'll have a first loop iterating from zero to size. Inside this, I'll create this frequency vector as I showed you to store the frequency of every character. Then I need another loop from i to the size. Uh, that is iterator j running from i to the end. Now first I can actually uh, store every frequency that is increase s of j minus a in ASCII format plus plus. This stores the frequency. And after I have done this, I can actually uh, have a boolean uh, that is a bool uh, bad a variable named initially zero. And in this variable can be turned on and off according to if I receive a frequency that is greater than two. So I can actually run inside the frequency uh, vector. And if I find any value greater than two, I turn bad equals to one. All right. And if I don't find bad equals to one, that means it's still zero. So not of bad means it's uh, true. So I can maximize J minus I plus one. That is the length of the current substring I was talking about in the, uh, from the res variable. All right, and I can actually return this res variable and this is a good to go solution. And as discussed, you can see I am running a loop over here. So this is O of n complexity. I'm running inside this also loop over here, maximum order of O n again. And that would mean I have an TC of, TC of O of n square. Is that right? And what about space? You are taking a frequency vector, 26 size, you're not taking anything else beyond that. So you can say overall space can be 26. So things are pretty good and this will definitely work in the contest. We can actually discuss above this one more solution which could have been optimized if let's say n was pretty huge. Let's say n was given in uh, 10 to the power 5 order, then what would you have done? Then we could have actually gone with a different approach and that approach is called a sliding window technique. All right, why a sliding window technique? I know that I am trying to maximum find the substring. And since the substring is a continuous segment, what can I do is I can actually, as per this piece of code, you can see, I'll actually comment this, uh, decomment this out so you understand this well. What I'll do, I'll take up the size of the string, the answer, and I'll initialize two iterators, L and R from the start. So I say, all right, I have this string with me. I keep an L over here and I keep an R also over here or rather a begin and end in my analogy, a begin over here and an end, uh, end over here. And I'll try to slide the window of actually sliding the iterator R till my condition is fulfilled. And as soon as I stop, I will checkpoint that location and I'll say up till here the string looked good. So I will finally say that let me store this length as my one of the maximum answer. And when I say that this condition has become false, I will start bringing L forward, that is the begin iterator forward, and smartly check whether how much L should I actually bring forward so that my condition is again fulfilled. And I do this in parts. So I say that I am, uh, let's say L was here, R was here. So some length R increased, maybe R went over here. Now some length L increased, L went over here then R maybe went over here, then L catched upon, maybe L went over here, then R went at the end and then maybe L catched up till here and then I ended the code. So this is a, a sliding window sort of a technique. I'm not going to go in the very depth of this uh, approach because as per the questions requirements, a brute solution would have worked, all right? But I'm still going to discuss a very small piece of code for you and I'm pretty sure you will e be easily be able to understand. This is a very basic question you must have come up uh, or come across uh, previously. So this is going to be an O of n solution, right? Why O of n solution? Or rather exactly this is, uh, this actually works in O of 2n because you have two iterators that could have maximum traversed the string, but we ignore the factor of 2n and we can say that this is a O of n solution, correct? Because in this, I am actually using pointer based approach for which I am only making them reach the end. And I am not using any other loop inside that which is increasing my time complexity. 
like so how does the whole code begin and how does the whole code look like you obviously have the map that is of 26 size in every everything is initially zero and i've taken a c variable that actually denotes how many characters are not fulfilling the condition of having at most two occurrences so what i'll say is i'll run loop while end is less than n i will increment map of s of n plus plus and as soon as i see that s of n is equal to 3 i will increment my c this shows me that c is the number of characters which are now not fulfilling my condition because their frequency has turned greater than 2 which is just greater than 2 that is 3 and then i have written a while loop in this now th what is this while loop doing this while loop is putting a check on c if it finds that c is greater than 0 then it will say all right you have brought r up till here you have brought r up till some location and when you did you actually have you will now have to stop because you now have found a character or the count of character which which are violating your condition have increased from zero so now you need to stop and now you need to bring your l forward how do i do that i say all right now begin is at the start this is l i am going to in decrement in the map s of begin uh, s of begins frequency that is whatever character was kept at s of begin i will decrement this and i am going to do this till I see that C value is positive. So I do this, I check, is the begin values character now has frequency two? If it has, then I can decrement C again to denote that now there is one less character who is not violating my condition. And naturally I increment my begin, op, begin iterator. And this while loop occurs till this condition is fulfilled that C is no more there because I need a substring in which no character is violating my condition of occurring more than twice. Now, once that is done, I can maximize that with my answer variable and I can the length n minus begin plus one with my answer variable and I can increment n by one. Now, this approach is running in an O of n solution. Why? Because you have a while loop in this that is running on the iterator end and the inner loop of C is only helping begin, it begin iterator also run parallelly to R, parallelly to the end iterator. So you can say this is an O of n solution and you are definitely having a space of O of 26 in this. So I can say overall approach for this is going to be O of n and space is going to be O of 26. All right. So these are very two basic approaches I have discussed with you for this problem. I thought this would be needful. All right. And this is where we can end our question one. Now let us move on to question number two. So problem two states apply operations to make sum of array greater than equal to k. All right, so what does this mean? Uh, you are given a positive integer k and initially you will have an array nums equal to one. Now you can perform any of the following operations on the array any number of times, possibly zero. And you are going to choose any element in the array. You will increase its value by one and you will duplicate or either, sorry, or you will duplicate any element in the array and you will add it to the end of the array. Now, return the minimum number of operations required to make the sum of elements of the final array greater than or equal to k. All right, so this is the problem that is given to us. Now, k is in order of 10 to the power 5. So, k is pretty huge. All right, so we need to take that into consideration also. That means if we actually form up a solution, we need some solution that runs in maybe O of k order. That would be good to go, right? So, uh, they have given you k equals to 11 and output is 5. And they have given you the operations which you could have done is you increment one by three times. So now the array has the single number four when it started with one. And then you duplicate four two times. So you have the number 12 that is popping to you. Correct. And this is definitely greater than 11. So the minimum number of operations you applied were five. And their argument is you could have not done lower than five. All right. All right. So. Now, as per the test case only, you will get a very good hint and intuition right and right over here. All right, just by reading the case, they have given me a slight hint that they have directly solved the case by telling you a small approach for this question. And we can actually try to verify whether this approach is right or not. So during the contest, test case reading is very important, right? If you look at their solution, they have first incremented the number that was the single number one, and then they have added on the number. They have not done anything that was in a different order. That means, that means 
I am not trying to tell you that this might, this is definitely the correct solution and always go ahead with the test case, but you get a hint. My thing to say is, they did not increment the number, then duplicate, duplicated it, then incremented it again, then duplicated it. They did not do anything like this, right? Why? You know that if you go ahead with this approach, greedily this approach will make sense. Why do I say this? Let's say you have the single number one in one with you. All right. And you make this number. Let's say you make this number go on to three. Then after this, you have either to make this four or to make this uh, either to make this uh, four or you will duplicate this and add on a new number six. Now, let's say your array up till here was some uh, the array up till here was only three. So when you started with one, you turned it on to three. Now the sum of your array is three. Greedily, you want the sum to be as large as possible, as fast as possible. Large, as fast as it could be, as it could be. This is definitely the idea, right? Because we are trying to approach a number K as soon as possible. So currently, if your sum looks like three, after you have done two operations, you have well performed two operations. And now you know that your sum looks like three. Do you think it would be optimal to now use your next operation to make this sum four or actually make this sum three and then actually duplicate this number six? That means nine. Which operation you did is actually helping you achieve your goal of approaching K more faster. Greedily, it, it's, it is common sense thing, right? It is definitely optimum for me to duplicate now three. Rather than incrementing on four, incrementing it to four, I should duplicate it and put a six. That gives me a net sum of nine. Is that right? That means duplicating is always beneficial as compared to incrementing. That is clear because incrementing, incrementing is only changing the value of the sum by one, but duplicating is actually changing the sum of the array, sum of the array by a better difference, by a better margin. So I should definitely have a duplicating approach in my mind. But now the question asks is, now the question comes, then should I duplicate? When should I duplicate? If you look at their case, this is a good thing to approach. What you can actually do is, you can first try and have a brute solution in which mathematically we can actually first calculate for every number from one, from every number, for every number from one, if I would have incremented it to some number, let's say, let, let's say some number n, I would have taken operation count one and then to actually make n into k, that means I would have added on n's duplicacy in the array. That means I would have actually made some more n's n, n, n again. I would have done this some OP operation two types, thus making my sum to turn out as greater than equal to k. I can say that OP1 plus OP2 has to be minimum, has to be minimum. So I can, in a brute manner, simply say, let me find this operation net count, that is OP1 plus OP2, for every n possible value. That means I can first argue, let me convert 1 to 1, let me convert 1 to 2, let me convert 1 to 3, let me convert 1 to 4, then 1, I will travel a journey of OP2 again to make the sum greater than or equal to k, Two, I will travel the journey again to make it some greater, greater than or equal to k, so on and so on. And whatever their net operations turn out, let's say this, this turned out as O1, this turned out as O2, O3, O4, I can say minimum of these is going to be the answer. Is that right? I can this do this a in a greedy sort of a manner. All right, and this intuition is coming to my mind because of the very simple fact that since I want to reach the k possible sum as fast as possible, it would make sense for me to duplicate rather than increment. But the question now arises is when should I duplicate? That is going to come to my mind. I should actually duplicate 
when i reach i i would have reached the most optimum n to duplicate but i don't know what the most optimum n is so i can actually do this in a brute manner for every possible n and when do, what do i say every possible n means you definitely need a range on n right you cannot keep checking on this to infinity you make n to 1 2 3 4 so on so on where do you stop it makes sense for me to stop at k by 2 at the number k by 2 why because that is the lowest i could have gone right that is the lowest i could have gone i can i could have said that i i can actually also go till k but i can also go till k by 2 because i know k is going to be very uh k definitely operations to make 1 to k using only the increment operations is definitely k so my answer can begin from k right what if i don't use my operation 2 and i only say increment 1 to k by using a very single 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 incrementation so you could have said my answer is definitely not exactly k k minus 1 i would be using k minus 1 of operation 1 types to actually increment 1 to k that would have resulted in a sum greater than greater than equal to k is that right but i when i start my answer with this now what limit should i actually go to the limit of n should be actually gone till k by 2 what if i try to make n equals to k by 2 if i try to make it k by 2 then in the next time i would have simply added on a copy of k by 2 to the array and i would have no known that in my array there would have been two elements k by 2 k by 2 whose sum would have been k is that right so i can run a loop till k by 2 for all the possible values of n now mathematically how do i actually calculate this operation 1 and operation operation 1 for every uh, possible n and operation 2 for every possible n right you are not iterating again remember since k is pretty huge you will definitely need a loop for n that runs in the order of k k you can say because i'm running till k by 2 now inside that loop do you think you can brute out everything do you think you can keep on incrementing 1 1 by 1 1 by 1 1 by 1 no we we have the privilege of mathematics we can actually find very quickly by simply using a uh, some div division method to figure out what would have been the op, op1 and op2 count is that right so let's talk about op1 let's say there is some n there is some 1 and there is some n so you need first type of operations how much you got to require to uh, create this n naturally that would have been n minus 1 right if there has if you want to reach n by incrementing 1 1 1 1 every time on this current number that is 1 if you want this to change to n you need n minus 1 operations so this is operation 1 count for every i now adding on to that you need to convert n or rather duplicate n sometimes in the array that times is actually op2 so that you receive a sum greater than equal to k now how do you do that how do you do that you can actually see this by simple mathematics let's say this is actually uh, you can actually say that if i divide if i divide k by n in double format and i can seal this out i can actually seal this out then this is going to give me the total number of ends which would have formed which would have formed a sum greater than equal to k is that right because i need a sum greater than equal to k so i need to seal so k by the current n if i divide this in a seal format in a double format this gives me the factor by which n into f would have turned out as greater than equal to k i am try i have found this f this number of times i should have actually received this n but now remember already in your array you have a n present that means i can decrement one from here and this is going to give me the op2 count because op2 is not starting by saying all ends are considered it is saying by there was present a single n you are adding some more ends so if you need those that frequency you can or that number of times or op2 you can decrement one from here all right so i hope mathematically this has become clear this is a very simple mathematics to understand for you all right so if we now look at the code part this is what i have done as explained and this is definitely working i have taken a very small base case over it. let's say if k was 1 then if you know k was 1 and you are starting with a single number 1 you need to return 0 right you don't need any operation counts 
and then I can begin my answer with k or rather even k minus 1 this is definitely going to work all right now what could have ha I have said all right how many operations am I actually talking about I could have said all right let me start with i equals to 1 I am going to take i2 less than equal to k by 2 and increment i every time this is the possible values of this number n which I was trying to tell you now how do I find the operation count or actually t count you can actually name this operation also how do I find this very simple first part this is op2 you actually seal out uh, k into uh, k by i that is k by n and then you actually minus one value from here is that right when you do that when you do that actually mathematically this should have been written as uh, taking the seal of this whole number correct because you can actually divide this out in a decimal format this gives you a decimal option then uh, negate uh, a one from this to denote that you have subtracted the n from here and now since you need a greater than equal to k value you need to seal this out all right so the uh, uh, greater than equal to some k value that means you need to seal the number of times out so this is what i've done k by i minus one and then this is op2 now you can increment i minus one and this is going to be op1 why i minus one as i explained n minus one if you had a general n now n over here is actually i where i is all possible value iterating from one to k by two so i minus one gives you op1 and k by i minus 1 seal gives you op2 this is there for the current i and i can minimize this out with the answer variable so that when i finally come out of this loop the answer variable stores the minimum number of operations i would have required to make a sum of array greater than or equal to all right so i hope this approach has become clear intuition starts with a very greedy sense all right looking at the cases also figuring if you actually run this for some dummy cases of your own you will understand yeah this is something good to go this is something i can uh, definitely figure out and by this op uh, approach i have added on some small mathematics for you you can actually uh, do this uh, with some different method of your own to calculate this uh, times of op1 and op2 but the crude idea should remain same Essentially, we are trying to first duplicate, uh, sorry, essentially we are trying to first increment and then duplicate. Now, what do you think is the time complexity for this? As uh, you can see very well, I am running a loop over here, correct? I to K minus uh, K by 2. That means this is an order of K loop, right? Order of K loop, definitely. Not K by 2, you can say. I can ignore that by 2 factor. And I have a space complexity of constant, right? I'm not using any data structure besides a single variable to actually store my answer. So I know that this is well within my boundaries. O, o of k is definitely going to work because of 10 to the 5 order and space is also working. And if I actually submit this out for you, you can see that this is going to give you a right answer. All right, definitely accepted. So this brings you to the end of our second problem. We can actually discuss the third problem. So third problem goes like this. You have most frequent IDs name and what does it read? The problem involves tracking the frequency of IDs in a collection that changes over time. Now you have two integer arrays, nums and frequency of equal length n and each element in nums represent an ID. Now each element in nums represents an ID and the corresponding element in frequency indicates how many times that ID should have been added or removed from the collection at each step. All right. So addition of ID is means if frequency of I is positive, you will, it means frequency I IDs with values nums I are added to the collection. Else if it is negative, it is removed or decremented from the collection at the step I. Now you will return an answer array of length N where answer I represents the count of the most frequent ID in the collection after the Ith step. All right. If collection is empty at any step, you will say answer of I is zero and I need to return zero for that. All right, so question is pretty simple to understand. If you look at the case itself, you, they have given you a very good explanation of this. First, let's say in the step zero, you insert a number two with the frequency three. And now since this is the highest frequency of the number, so you return three, correct? Next time you insert a number three with the frequency two. Now still the highest frequency is three. That means you need to return the frequency three. Next time you insert or actually you remove the same number which is present two, you decremented frequency by three because this is negative three. 
So now the frequencies are 2 and 0. So now the highest frequency is actually 2. So you return the answer to be 2. Next time you uh, make a num 1 with the frequency 1 and it still has the highest frequency 2. So you return 2 again. Alright, borderline, you're trying to maintain frequencies, right? That is the understood, that is the idea from the problem you get, right? You can use a good data structure to actually maintain the frequencies. And I think then you would be, would be good to go. But the whole idea lies is this updation, which is happening of the addition and remo removal. How do I handle that? Right? If this updation would have not been there in a very brute manner, you could have argued I can meant if I'm trying to maintain frequencies, and rather I'm trying to maintain the largest frequency every time, I could have used a priority queue. Is that right? A priority queue, what is a priority queue? Priority queue is a data structure which actually helps you maintain at the, if this is a, this is actually called a heap. If you actually maintain a max heap or a max priority queue in C++, you can actually, whatever is that the top element, you can maintain that top element to have the largest value. Now, in this case, you're trying to maintain the largest frequency. So the top element can actually have the setting order or the parameter by which the elements are differentiated as frequency of the first type. And the second parameter you can also set. So uh, rather than maintaining a single number inside priority queue, you could have actually maintained two numbers together. That number would have been actually like uh, you would have actually maintained a pair of you can say uh, int in type and first parameter would have declared the frequency and the second parameter would have been actually the number which has that frequency. So whenever you maintain this priority queue, it will get automatically every time it is automatically kept sorted on the basis of the first parameter frequency. So the top element of this priority queue would have given you the top frequency for every query and you would have been good to go. But the whole problem lies is with this updation, right? When you read the problem, you will get this idea. You will get this idea that, all right, I am trying to query for every uh, possible uh, answer. That means I will have a iteration. I would have to run an iteration for the answer. That means I will have a brute solution running in one to Q. If Q is the number of queries I'm trying to answer, or I can say actually N, N is the size of array. And for every time I'm trying to pop my answer, I, I'm trying to say, all right, what is answer of I from one to N? So you need to follow for this inside this. If you need the frequency very quickly, you could have used your priority queue. So this also hits very well, right? This is a first idea hits very well. I am good to go. I know that this is a good thing to go, but the idea is how do I handle updations? Let's say after some step, I say a uh, frequency, this number, this number, which was actually here, this number's frequency, which was, let's say maybe currently three. Now it's, it has got updated and it has now become, let's say two. What if this is no longer the top element now? What if this element now no longer is two, it has to become equal to three. Now, how do you do that? How do you do that? If you think this is still, uh, this is, you can still work on this. No, you cannot. And removal from the priority queue is also not possible. There is no function as such, which could have helped you to remove in the priority queue in a very good time complexity for the, this sort of an updation. What if the number was somewhere in the middle of priority queue and you need an updation there? Do you think it is possible to update in the priority queue in the middle part? No, it is not. That means the updation cannot be done for every, uh, uh, I'll write this idea. Updation cannot be done for every num. Why? Because there is no such available function inside the priority queue structure, which can help you do this. So priority queue is only helping you fulfill a small part of the deal. It is helping you maintain the largest frequency, but it is not helping you updation. But the now question lies is, do you actually need updation for every number? No. Aren't you concerned with the highest top element in the priority queue every time? You are. If I ask you, let's say you would have updated the some element that came in the middle of the priority queue. Let's say its frequency initially was something like two and now it became one. Do you think if the highest frequency initially was four that was kept at the top, is this top hampered? No. So even if this gets updated, do you think you need to check its updation? No, I don't need to check its updation. That means I can use a concept called stale updation, stale updation. What do you mean by that? What do I mean by that? When I say stale updation, what will I say? 
when i receive a number again whose frequency has changed i will say all right let me insert its new frequency and num as a pair in the priority queue but since i am only concerned with the top element when i would be returning some answer i will first check is the top element which i actually think is an answer is it an answer or not how i would be maintaining a map i can maintain an unordered map unordered map to contain the current and the latest updated frequencies that means this unordered map can be used to store the frequencies of the latest order but the priority queue can maintain stale updations so when i actually insert some number inside the priority queue i am good to go but if i now say return the top answer you can first cross check with this latest frequency map is the top elements frequency and number actually a pair in the unordered map or not that means in the unordered map for the number num does the frequency actually matches or not if it does not match that means this current top value although is present in the priority queue is something that had to be removed but was not removed because it was maybe somewhere present in the middle or you can simply argue removal was not possible directly because removal is only possible from the top end and i cannot remove anywhere from the middle and since i'm only concerned with the top element i should actually think in such a way let me only maintain the top elements cross checking till and till i think top element is definite and good to go that means it cross verifies with the unordered map i am maintaining having the latest frequency updates i will report that as an answer or that frequency at the top as an answer and if i think that is not the case that clearly dictates that i must have inserted this frequency somewhere behind and now it has got updated since it has got updated it does not match with the unordered maps frequencies hence i need to pop this and cannot report this as an answer do uh, this idea is i think pretty understandable all right so that means this idea of stale updation works all right stale updation works so i will insert the frequency and num pairs in the priority queue of the pair type and while doing that i will also update my map continuously having the latest updation on the frequencies whether it gets added by frequency i value subtracted by frequency i value so on so on i'll maintain that and when i want to return the answer i would have looked up at the top element but if the top element is not cross verifying with my current latest frequency in the unordered map then i would not return that as an answer but rather treat that as a stale value which would have meant this is something i should have popped up previously but still it was not possible for me to pop up because maybe some, there was something in the middle it was something present some some else location and updation or uh, sorry popping was only possible from the top end so i will pop it now this is a stale value i don't need to work with this all right so i think this idea has now become clear all right and if you actually look at the time complexities for doing this it is going to be very low or actually not i, I can say low but actually within our boundaries all right so things are going to look much more clearer if we look at the code part to understand this right uh i'll bring up the code for you so this is the small piece of code what will i do naturally i'll maintain the priority queue pair type since you know i am maintaining long long of the i can actually make everything long long over here not a big deal right so i'll maintain of long long type because the vector also returned it didn't need had had to be returned of the long long type so i maintain all variables in long long so i have priority queue of the pair type pq in which what is the first thing first is frequency and what is the second thing second is the number and then i have the map in the map reverse thing what is the first that is the key key is actually the num and what is the value value is actually the frequency of that num and then i have the answer which is the answer to the every query now i actually iterate in the num size correct num size because i need an answer so i'll be iterating for num size i first update my frequency in the map so i say all right this is an unordered map i will update mp of nums of i plus equal to frequency of i so if frequency of i is negative it automatically gets decreased if it's positive it gets added on and then i will push this current pair of 
first frequency that is mp of nums of i comma the nums of i that is the pair of frequency comma num in the priority queue that is pq once i do this priority queue since it is a data structure that will automatically sort everything it is going to sort out everything and it is going to bring me the largest frequency comma num pair in the top side is that right but now i need to return that as an answer so i could have directly written this statement but i cannot write this statement that is i could have directly pushed the top's first value that is the frequency in the answer but do you think i can do that directly no because as i explained there is a concept of stale what if there was some previous number which whose frequency has now been updated and it no longer is the top element it no longer has the highest frequency what if its frequency got decreased there is a stale updation you need to check that and because you are only concerned with the top element you can actually first check is the pq dot m y you can run a while loop and check till pq is empty till pq is not empty actually you can first extract the top element that is pair of long in long long of long long type p from pq to a top and then keep a very small check you can check is the mp of p of second that means the in the map mp p of second means the num is the frequency stored in the latest map equal to the p dot first or not if it is not equal that means this is a old value it is a stale value i need to not use it i cannot use it i need to pop it out because it has been updated now it doesn't match with the map so i will pop this out i say pq dot pop and if that is not the case so i will break right and right from here because i know i have just received a peak, uh, top which is correct it is good to go it matches with the latest structure latest values latest updated values i had stored in the map so i can break from here and when i actually execute this piece of code now i am making sure that the top element in the pq is actually having a frequency which is good to go it is well uh, crossed verified and cross checked with the current updations in the array or current updations in the map all right so this is the solution i hope this is clear right this is not going to be a very big piece of code if you understand this so you can actually run this for uh, test cases of your own and you will understand yeah this is good to go all right so idea should be clear stale updation is a good concept over here and this intuition is coming to me because of the very basic idea that although i would first hand think updation is required for every value but since you are only bothered about the top value you don't need to uh have a data structure which is helping you update everything you are only concerned with the top value so you can actually update the top value only when it is required what if the top value matches and you are good to go no need to do anything what if it does not match only then pop it out all right so this is the idea now what about the time complexity of this piece of code right uh you are using an unordered map right so you are using o1 order of complexities for everything for insertions for every uh, deletions and updations this is o of n complexity then you using a priority queue in priority queue everything runs in log n so insertion typically runs in o of log n correct so now you can see this loop this is running in o of n solution is that right now you are adding on the frequency so this is if you update or insert first time this is o of 1 and then you are push backing every time this pair so this is log n again is that right so you have n log n solution that is working now you have an n log n solution that is pretty visible right you definitely have an n log n complexity in this case n log n in this case but what about next what about next you have this while loop so you might think this while loop is going to add a very huge complexity in this but if you actually look at this piece of code what is this code actually doing this is not getting multiplied in the code but actually getting added because for every element either you are popping it or pushing it and you are doing the maximum n times so you can argue that this while loop is then added complexity to log n yes so because this is an added complexity to log n i can say that this is an added n complexity because this while loop is going to maximum run in n iteration maximum it could have happened that you need to pop everything out so n log n plus n is a good complexity to go all right so this is the time complexity which actually can be reported as n log n only because n log n is the superseding term so overall complexity is actually n log n and if you actually run this solution you will see that this works so if this solution would not have been in the boundaries because n is pretty huge in 10 by 5 order this would have definitely not worked and now what about space you are using a map 
correct that ha going to have a space of o of n and you are also using a priority queue maximum size of that can also be n so you can say overall space can be n also for the answer also n so you can say n is a good space complexity for the piece of code all right so this brings you to the end of a problem correct uh, takeaway is this stale idea concept right this is a good concept to actually remember and uh, use it wherever you find such questions where updations are required but because in priority queue it was not necessary for me to update every value i came up with this logic all right so now we can move on, move on to actually the fourth problem and discuss its solution all right so problem 4 states longest common suffix queries right so as you can see the problem itself the statement is pretty clear you will be given two arrays of strings words container and words queries and for each word query i you need to find a string from words container that has the longest common suffix with words i if there are two or more strings in words container that share the longest common suffix then you will find the string that is smallest in the length and if there are two or more such strings that have the same smallest length you will find the one that occurred earlier in the words contain all right so your option uh, your actually solution is to actually answer a uh, return and answer a uh, variable which is actually representation of an array of integers answer i denotes the index of the string in words container that has the longest common suffix with words i fulfilling these two conditions all right so longest common suffix as the name states pretty simple to understand right from the back which is the longest string that matches so let's say if the string was a b c d and you would have uh, a b c d b c d x b c d and you let's just start begin your question for c d now you know c d as a string is shared by all these strings correct c d is coming here also c d is coming here also c d is coming here also now in the first rule it says if let's say it is shared by two or more strings you will find the string that is smallest in length so out of these three strings which are the potential answers the best string is bcd because bcd is the smallest length it shares the prefix cd or the longest common prefix cd and it is the best potential answer now so you can say that the bcd's index that is 1 gets the answer for this query next time you begin with bcd you say all right bcd is shared as a longest common suffix uh, by all these three strings right bcd matches here bcd matches here bcd matches here so i know all these three are potential answers but again same solution out of these three which are the best which is the best potential candidate now smallest length is bcd so i can take this string and i can report the answer to be 1 now i have the string xyz so this is something different xyz has no common suffix matching with any of the strings you don't see xyz matching as a longest common suffix as meaning from the end it it begins with z do you think there's a z coming over here from the end in any string no that means nothing matches so there's an empty string now if there is an empty string again the same rule applies if there is an empty string that means empty string matches with all three characters all three strings are a potential answer you can see over here that it shares a common prefix no string as a common prefix hence the longest common suffix sorry common suffix is empty that is shared at string 0 1 and 2 and because string 1 is has the shortest length index 1 string has a shortest length you can report one as your answer again all right so this is the answer to the first query if you simply if you can also then see the example 2 you will understand that this is what the answer should come for 2 0 2 they have give, given a good explanation over it all right so i'm i'm not going to go deep into that but you understand the question pretty well question is simple to understand right just report the index in the words container of any string that has the longest common suffix with every words query of i is that right so all right now we have understood the question let us look at the constraints right that is going to give us an hint towards our brute solution we have a pretty huge lens for word query words container 10 to power 5 or 10 to power 4 order actually words length is also pretty huge 10 to power 3 order and yeah this is all good to go so constraints are looking a pretty high side right if let's say i think of a brute solution i ask what do you think is going to be a brute solution you can say all right for a brute solution if i am going to make a brute solution i'm going to return the answer for every words query that means i will have to iterate on this words query right so i need a for loop that iterates if this is a brute solution i need a for loop that iterates on the queries or on the actually words query array for every string now once i am inside this i have the string with me let's say i call this words of words query of i or w of i rather i have this word with me right i'm trying to find its answer 
what am I trying to do essentially? I'm trying to match the best prefix. So I, uh, best suffix. So for that, I could have actually said, all right, then let me, uh, let me do, let me do one thing. Let me iterate uh, inside the uh, main uh, words container. And when I do that, I will have a iteration in the order of one to n of all loop n. So I'll have an iteration on one to n. Since I am going to find the earliest occurrence, so I need I need an iteration from the start. I will iterate, then I'll start matching the suffixes. Do I think I'm able to match a suffix? If I'm able to match some suffix inside this, so I'll have a naive check of suffix matching inside this. And if I'm able to match some suffix, I will say, all right, I can maximize that suffixes length with some answer. If it's greater, I can store that index and so on and so on. I can do all those if and else checks inside this uh, naive solution. You, you can definitely figure that out on your own, right? But the idea is to even before think this, you will see this is not going to work. Why? Because this is a very high solution, very high time complexity solution. Why? You will argue that O of, uh, you will you will run this uh, solution in uh, this for loop in O of Q, where Q can be termed as the words query size. Inside this, you're again running a order of O of N, where I can say N is the total size of words container. And I'm not even going to go deep in what complexity should would you have achieved for actually doing the naive approach inside this. Naive approach is definitely going to have some checks of running an iteration from the back inside of every string, matching every character and character. And you know that length of every letter is also in 10 to power 3 order. So inside this also you have a pretty huge 10 to power 3 order. So I can say that overall time complexity is Q into N into 10 to power 3, which is definitely not good to go. If Q and N both are in 10 to power 4 order, 10 to power 4 order, this is definitely looking like a bad solution. This is definitely greater than 10 to power 8 general solution. And this is, or 10 to power 6 rather, if you can say, I know this is not going to work. So that is the main idea behind the problem. I need, if only there was some data structure, which could have held me reduce this queries I was talking about, or answer to every query, which I'm actually fetching, I would have been good to go. Is that right? If you would have iterated for every uh, words of query of I and you would have asked me, all right, let me give give me the answer in a very faster complexity than current. What would have been the most optimal index for W of I? If there was some data such a present with you, then I think we would be good to go. And the argument is, yes, there is a data such a present. Now look at the intuition part. You are working with suffix. Is that right? And common suffix from the end. And you're also trying to query with every string. Now, just remember a data structure that is called try. We are all familiar with a data structure that is called try. You know that you must have encountered questions or you can solve questions with a data structure called try, which look in a prefix query format, right? Most of the time we use a try data structure to actually do a, a query sort of a question. If I would have asked you, for prefix based queries, trying to match a string to a prefix or trying to find the longest common prefix or something and so on and so on. We have, we are well familiar with the try. Now the argument stands is, why am I saying I can still use a try over here? Because the question is a very small modification, right? What modification are they doing? Rather than saying you are finding the longest common prefix, which would have been good to go in my analogy, they have simply asked you find the longest common suffix. What is the difference between prefix and suffix? Prefix says, I'll start from the start. Suffix says, I'll start from the end. So if I want to maintain a try, which is able to query out the answer or pop out the answer for longest common suffix, I should actually iterate in the words from the backend side. If I would have inserted the try characters as let's say I would have tried to insert some letter, some character, some, uh, some string, let's say ABCD. So if I would have tried to find prefix, I would have tried to insert A, then B, then C, then D, starting from the root of the try. But now since I want longest common suffix queries, it's the simple question of saying every string has been reversed and now you're trying to find prefix or you can simply start insert from the back. First insert D, then insert C, then insert B and then insert A. All right, so I hope the idea has now become clear. This is what the crude idea of the problem is. The problem is very easy to understand once you get the hang of try, all right? Try is a data structure, which essentially is going to help me answer queries related to prefix very fast. But because this is asking common suffixes, I can actually, I insert 
uh, the try or maintain the try in a reverse format for every string and that is going to help me query my answer. So now rather than actually uh, inserting A, B, C, D, I would have insert B, C, D, B, uh, D uh, A, B, C, D, D, C, B, I would, I would have inserted. Then B, C, D, uh, uh, D, sorry, D, C, B, D, C, B, X. And when I would have queried also, I would have queried from the back inside. So I would have queried for Z, Y, X, D, C, B, C, D, and so on. All right, so now how do I essentially maintain a try? Why is my try helping? All right, so we'll have a very quick exploration of try on this first example, and I think we'll be good to go. All right, so essentially what does a try contain? It definitely starts off with the root. And every try has a node which has some relationship and that relationship is defined on the relation for every adjacent letter. In this case, we are maintaining strings and every node is of the try node structure, correct? I define a class to be try node and I declare it's some parameters related to this try node. All right, so parameters, we have very some, some very common parameters to this. One parameter is called, in my analogy, I this is a Boolean parameter called is special. Either this is true or false for every, any node. If this is true, what does that denote? That denotes that this is the end of a word. And if it is not a, uh, it is not true, that means this is not end of any word. All right. Next, what does it denote? Since I know I only have, it is clearly written, I only have lowercase English letters. That means there is a connection from every node and that node is going to have some children. How many children? Maximum 26 children because I represent every node to be a character. So I say this is going to have a next parameter as a vector of this try node type only. You can say try node type named children. And this is going to be of 26 size with everything initially as null. All right, so I will just begin with the idea. Let us first try to simply see what the insertion is going to happen, right? Very common to understand. Basic insertion in try happens. For We obviously need to match common suffixes with words container. So what words do you think I should insert in the try? I should insert the words in the words container. And as explained, since this is suffix and not prefix, I should actually entertain the insertion in a reverse manner for every word. So now let's say I have words A, B, C, D, B, C, D. I have words A, B, C, D, I have B, C, D, and then I have X, B, C, D. So what should I do? I should insert them in a reverse manner. So I'll say, all right, first, I am beginning with the first word. First letter is now D from the reverse. So I insert a D, then I insert a C, then I insert a B, and then I insert a A. And this A can be marked green because I know this is the end. All right, or is its special property has been turned true. All right. Now, what do I do now? I have the next word that is B, C, D. I have the from the end, I have D, C and B. So D is there, C is there. Now B is there and I can mark B as green because I know this is also now a end of a word if I would have started from the root. Now I have X, B, C, D from the reverse order D, C, B, X. So D, C, B and then I can extend an X from this and I can mark this as green also because I know this is the end. So words have been inserted, right? Words have been inserted in a reverse manner. Now I need to check for every word query. Now let's say I had the first word add CD. They asked you for CD. That means they're trying to ask you, this is zero first index and second index. They want to ask you, which is the longest suffix that matches with CD. Or you can say, which is the longest prefix that is matching with DC. That is the reverse of CD. Is that right? So I can now begin my answer in like this. I can say, all right, D I need for D. All right, I have from the root, I have D. So I can move on to D. Next time I have the next letter C, I can move on to C. And this is where I need, I should end. And what do I need to return over here? I need to return, if I can, I need some parameter that is connected with every node, which could have stored the potential information to tell me that if I stop at over here, the longest matching that happened was with the, was with the, uh, I should say, index one in the words container. That means I need some extra parameter to this. I need some extra parameter connected with every node, which is helping me store this information. So this is where the whole modification of try falls. First modification, I understood this was suffix to a conversion of prefix or rather simply uh, doing the insertions and the checking in the reverse manner for every word. Next modification is what extra property are you using in try to actually maintain this out? 
I can call this extra property as some index. I can name this as index. What is this index actually storing? I'll add down to this parameter. Initially, I can keep this value as negative one. And what do I do? Every time I insert the word or insert the letter of the word from the right to the left time, I can actually maintain or update this index parameter for that node to be the index value of the word container. And I can also maintain a check where I received a better possible, better possible candidate. So index is actually going to store the best candidate having the index in words container, which could have been returned as the answer. So uh, I'll try to understand, I'll try to make you understand what I'm trying to say. All right. What would I have done is, this is definitely green. All right. So now I know this is marked green. This is marked green. This is marked green. This is marked green. Now I'll change my pen to red and I'll say, all right, you would have started with the first character B D C B A. So while you created D, you will, you will say, all right, D's index is negative one initially. So I'll make this index as zero. I will pop up and I'll connect a parameter zero to this because this denotes that from the root up till here, the prefix or in the reverse manner, the suffix is matching with the letter D, which contains in the index zero. Is that right? Next time I say, all right, next time the letter C, I'll connect C to zero also. Then B, B also zero and A, A also zero. So everything looks like this. Now, next time I receive the string B, C, D, I begin from this, uh, uh, right hand side, I have a B, I have a D, sorry. Now D matches. So I know there is a node existence D, which has a current index that is stored zero. What is this telling me? It is telling me that before this, you had some input of strings for which there was an index zero, which had the common suffix matching as D up till here. But now I am again coming to D and my current index is one. And I know the string kept at this index one is smaller in size than the string kept at the index zero. I know BCD is smaller in size than ABCD. So if the index is not equal to negative one, I can put the next further if check to check if the new uh, string I just received, which I'm trying to insert is its size lower. If its size is lower, that means I can update this index to be one. Is that right? Next time, same happens. I turn on to C. I know up till here, the pre, uh, suffix D and C is matching with the strings A, B, C, D and B, C, D. And the last potential candidate was save was zero. But now I know I need to update this as one because the string B, C, D is lower in size than A, B, C, D. So I need to fulfill this condition also. If there are two or more strings matching up till here with a common suffix, you need the smaller out of those two. So that is what I'm doing over here. All right. And because I'm inserting the strings, from the left to the right in the words container, I know I am of by simple conditions fulfilling the second condition as well only that if let's say you receive a string that has the same smallest length, then you will definitely report the potential candidates index, which has the earlier index in the words container because you inserted it first. All right, so it won't get updated if the same length is there. If it only gets updated when you receive a lower length. But now by the same concept, this B gets updated to one. Now I have the next string X, B, C x b c d now i have the string i have the letter d do you think d's index one gets updated no why because the string b c d is lower than size than x b c d so do you think it gets updated it was present but it does not get updated similarly with c b doesn't get updated and now x x gets created newly and because it's newly created initially it was negative one it will now get updated to two so with every node you can see i have involved a new parameter, which is helping me store some crucial information. And how is that information now helping me? If I go on to answer the string for DC, you say, all right, DC in reverse manner means CD in reverse manner. Basically, I begin with the first letter that is D. I say, all right, D is matching from the root up till here. Good to go. I'll move on to D. Now, next letter C. C matches. I have the uh, uh, child as C. Good to go. Now I exhaust the string, I end and voila, look at this index. This index is one. The parameter you saved was one, which denoted that this string could have matched with a longest common suffix, fulfilling the two conditions given to you with the best potential candidate stored at index one. That was BCD. You could have seen that this was common. This suffix was common. So now I know one can be reported quickly as my answer for this query. Similarly, I would have asked you for BCD. That means in reverse order, D, C, B. 
So you would have turned for D, gone till D, gone till C, and then gone till B, voila, ended, and then returned one again because one is a potential answer. It is the best answer actually to return for the common suffix. And now, what about the last ring, X, Y, Z? X, Y, Z means in reverse order, Y, uh, sorry, Z, Y, X. You know, Z matches with nothing. You know, for, from the root, do you have any matching to anything? No, you don't have any matching to anything. So with the root also, you can actually involve this parameter. This root is also a trinotype, right? So with this root also, you can use the same condition and attach a, a length, a attach a index to it, which initially starts with negative one, and it gets updated every time you receive a string which is lower in the, uh, which is the smallest in size. Because if you talk about a string which has the common suffix as null, or nothing, then you need to return the index which has the smallest or the earliest index in the words uh, container uh, array which has the smallest size. So you can keep on updating. You can first make it this zero. The next time you insert the uh, word BCD, you can check is BCD's length smaller than ABCD? Yes, so I can, you can read this as one. And then X, XBCD is not lower, so this can be kept as one. And now when you want your answer for XYZ, you can say, uh, sorry, uh, for ZYX in reverse manner, you can say, all right, Z is nowhere from the root. So I can stop right and right over here and I can return the answer for the root. So everything gets handled, right? I have handled the empty condition also, and I've handled the base condition also. All right, now what do you think is the time complexity? Try discussion is done. I argued that try was a better method. How, how was try a better method? If you talk about the insertion now, you will see, you will see that insertion is ha happening in n into 26 complexity. Why is that? Because uh, you have uh, every, sorry, uh, not n into 26, Rather, it is actually happening in n, that is every every word is getting inserted, n into words container i dot length is in 10 per 3 order. So you can say this is running in, if I say every word's size is w, so this insertion is running in n into w. Correct, so currently n into w means n is in order of 10 to power 4, this is in order of 10 to power 3. So you have exactly, if I say 10 to 5 into 10 to power 7 order somewhat to insert every character. Is that right? Because you will go to every uh, every uh, string and then go to its every character from the end side and keep on inserting, keep on inserting, keep on inserting. And now when you want to check or query, this query answer, if this is the insertion complexity, then this query complexity is also pretty small. If I say that the query size or queries were Q, then for every query, you are able to answer the uh, answer to the index in a constant time complexity just by iterating on every letter in the given queries uh, string in the reverse manner. So this is Q into, you can say, if I say this is also size W, then this is also Q into W, which is again 5 into 10 by 7 order. All right. So you saved your naive check over here. Is that right? You did not exceed your time complexity and you are still within your boundaries. Maximum you could have gone till 10 to power 8 order, which is good to go. I am not going to get a TLE. All right, so this is the whole idea behind the problem. If you try to run this, dry run this case on the second uh, example also, you will understand that yes, we are good to go. All right, so now code part is essential. We can actually look at the code part to understand how do I do this. Before looking at the try node and the try structure, we can actually discuss what other things am I doing in the main code part. So in the solution, you can see I am creating an object of the try class. And then what will I do? I will create an answer vector, which I need to return. I will insert every uh, words of I, along with a passing its ith index because I need to map this index property to this index I pass and the words container itself that is the vector of uh, strings. Why? Because I need to also have a check whether if I have received a possible option of receiving a lower string size. All right. And I do this for every character. So I call this insert function every time. And then I query in the words query and I push back in my answer, the answer that would have popped with the search query or the query main query by passing this it that is the word in the words query. So this is the overall solution. I return answer and I'm good to go. Is that right? Now, what do I have more? What do I have more? Next time I say, all right, I am going to now discuss the try node and tries class. So try node class, as discussed, you will have a special property, children property and the index property. Everything is initially none and index is negative one. All right, so I can actually write this statement over here, right? Index is negative one. Now, what do I have? I have more try. Now, when I have a try, 
inside the try i will create the constructor with the con help of constructor i will create the root now insertion how does insertion act i take the word i take the index and i take the words container what do i say now i begin with the current that is the root and for the root i first write a small piece of code so that i am able to update the roots index so i say is the current index negative one if it is then i make it equal to the current i ind i passed and if that is not the case then i put a small check is the words containers current index size greater than the current index that is ind size if that is then i update the index to ind this is for the root part now i actually begin iterating from the back side i say all right words dot size minus 1 to greater than equal to 0 i minus minus extract the word ch first check is this ch actually there as a child if it is not i create that child then i move on to that child and then i do a very simple check same check as the above root i first check is this index first time created that means it is a negative one if that is the case i declare it to be ind if that is not the case then i check is the previous stored index size greater than the uh, current index word size if that is then i update the index and when i end the word i can mark its its special property as true all right so good to go now what do i do with the search in the search you say all right start with the current i first mark my answer to be by current index because that is the roots answer now i start checking for the common suffix i begin with the iteration from the back end side extract the character if that character is not present that means i need to end if that is not present as a child that means i need to end and i can return my answer right and right from here and if that is not the case so i can move on to the child and actually update my answer to its index or the property parameter i stored as current index and then finally return my answer if i ended this loop previously while if i would have ended or i iterated on the whole uh, word then i would have returned the answer all right so now what is the time complexity time complexity as i discussed you can see very well over here you have a loop over here running so this is o of uh, you can say words container size into insertion is acting with a very simple loop in words size so word of size whatever is the length you are running in that so i can say insertion is also n into w and that so is the search so is the search complexity correct so you can say whatever is the maximum of the sizes of these two it can be the answer overall i can say this is an order of 5 into 10 power 7 which is good to go now what about space complexity what about space you are having n words correct okay? so you are definitely inserting n words and every word which you insert you are having per word you are having maximum to end you are inserting every letter of that word you are trying to insert every letter of that word you can say and for that word you are having 26 maximum options so you can say space is still good to go i am having a good amount of space i am having a very small amount of space which i am using it is definitely within my boundaries so this is a very crude idea of the space right not to worry about space this is definitely good to go all right so what is the take away from the problem problem take away is to understand that yes okay i have was talking about a common suffix and i have done sort of questions or i have understood the concept of try which helps me handle prefix so if i modify the try to handle suffix i would have to reverse the word and then insert and then to store that extra parameter to actually handle this case is the next modification so try is the good data structure to go wherever you are asked suffix or prefix queries now you know both cases can be handled like this all right so this brings us to the end of our weekly contest 390 discussion thank you